everything you need to know to go on your first Disney cruise. All right, let's go. So first I wanna tell you some things that you need to know even before you get on the cruise ship. This is just about booking cruises, those sorts of things. Then I'll talk about checking in, how do you get your port activities. Then I'll talk about things you need to know on embarkation day. Uh, then things you need to know when you're actually on board the ship and then things you need to know when you leave. And right now I am on the Disney Magic and uh, we are just pulling into Ensenada, Mexico. But let's go ahead and start with things you should know before you book your cruise. First, let's talk about actually booking your cruise. There's two main ways to book your cruise. You can book it on the Disney website, disney.com, or you can book it through a travel agent. It's gonna be the same price either way. Uh, I booked on the Disney website because it was easy, it was self-service, I could pick my rooms. People like to book through travel agents because sometimes you can get a little bit of like a kickback or onboard uh, like money or funds to spend if you book through a travel agent. Agent. Now, the earlier you book your cruise, the cheaper it's going to be and the better selection of cabins you're going to have. This cruise we're on, two night cruise to Ensenada, Mexico from San Diego, sold out by the time like a week or two before we booked five months out and we paid $2,200 for a deluxe ocean view stateroom for two adults and one child three years old. Uh, Disney cruises are probably some of the more expensive cruises out there, heavily themed for kids. They know that they can charge a premium from Mickey and they do. Now, how early will you want to book your cruise out? Well, they book out uh, even like they open up even more than a year in advance. In November of 2023, they were just releasing dates for early 2025 sailing. Now for that $2,200, what's included in that? Well, uh, all the food, the basic food, the basic drinks, the shows, um, the activities on board the ship, those are usually included. What is not included? Well, premium food. So there's a premium restaurant you can eat at called Palo. That costs more money to eat at the whole restaurant. Even in the regular restaurants, um, there's like smoothies or alcohol you can order. That costs more. Even popcorn at the movie theater costs more. I was amazed at the number of upcharges on the ship for things. So don't expect that what you pay, uh, that you won't be paying more. There is some more drip pricing for more things on board the ship. Uh, and certainly if you're doing port excursions, those are gonna cost you more too. Oh, and this is an American cruise line. And so the staff does appreciate tips. Tips are not included in that price. Uh, they do have a way that you can like pay it early ahead if you just wanna pay your tips with your credit card when you check in uh, or bring a few dollars with you when you're on board the ship. Also the kids clubs to um, have your kid have a good time, uh, check them in while you're doing some adult things. Most of those are free. The one that's not free is the nursery, the one for kids six months of three years age. They do charge hourly for that. It's like about nine bucks an hour, so not too expensive, but one more fee. Okay, now your price just isn't dependent on number of people. It's also dependent on the type of room that you pick. So Disney Cruises have 10 different types of rooms broken down into four different categories. Starting from the least expensive is the inside room. These rooms are gonna be the smallest and they're gonna have no windows. Then you have the ocean view rooms. These have a pretty big porthole, pretty big window to look out through. Then you have the veranda rooms. These are the rooms that have balconies. And then finally you have the concierge rooms, which are gonna be the biggest, most luxurious and give you access to the concierge lounge, special place to eat and drink just for concierge guests. Also, you get special privileges to board and get in line if you book the concierge. Pro tip on selecting rooms, if you get seasick or motion sick from the motion of the ocean, book a room in the center of the ship on a low floor. The lower you get and the more center you get, the less it moves. The further uh, back or forward you are, or in this case, the further forward or back you are, those go up and down. And then the higher you are, the ship sways more, so low and central. Now, after you've booked your cruise, the next date you're gonna wanna put on your calendar is 75 days before the cruise. As a new cruiser, that's when you're gonna be able to reserve your activities on board and your shore excursions. People who've cruised more, they get to reserve theirs ahead of time, but you as a first time, 75 days before. That opens at midnight Eastern time, 75 days before. So if you wanna go out in and Sonata and go to the blowhole and you wanna book the bus, well, you gotta do that before everybody else does. If you want your kid to go to the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique and get a makeup, uh, you gotta book that there. If you want nursery time, definitely book that ahead of time. You can do it on the Disney website or you can do it on the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app, the app that they 
uh, make you use when you're on board the ship. We're gonna talk more about that later. All right, your next milestone is gonna be 30 days before your cruise, midnight Eastern time. That's when you're gonna wanna check in. And you're gonna wanna check in as soon as possible, like right on the dot of midnight Eastern time, 30 days before, because the earlier you check in, the earlier port arrival time you can select, meaning you can get on the ship earlier. Port arrival times generally range from 11 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., but if you're one of the first people to get on the ship, you have your run of everything from restaurants to pools, and so it's really good to try to be early. You have to make it all the way through the check-in process to then select the boarding time, which means you need to upload pictures of everybody's passport on your reservation and also like a headshot photo of everybody as well. So if you want to expedite that check-in process, make sure you have pictures of the entire passport, the not the, all the pages, but the picture page and the signature page, and then make sure you have headshots of everybody so you don't have to go finding it to the check-in so it doesn't take you longer. And then once you get to the end of the online check-in process, you can check that port arrival time. The earlier, the better. I think it took me like 10 minutes to complete the online check-in right at midnight Eastern, and I got a 12.30 um, port arrival time, so there were many people that did it faster than 10 minutes that got the earlier ones. All right, well, once you've checked in, you know, pretty much the next thing to do is embarkation day, the day of your cruise. Well, at least in 2023, the time I'm recording this, they are still making you do like a health survey the day before. They make you answer like three questions in your email about whether you have a cough or things like that and then you show up and get on board. So when you're coming to the Disney Cruise and it's embarkation day, you have that port arrival time. <clears throat> it is a 15 minute window that they let your group in. Um, in San Diego, they put out lines for three different boarding groups at once about 45 minutes before they board. So don't get to the port any more than 45 minutes before your boarding group. Otherwise, you'll have no place to stand in line. They let our 1230 group in starting in at about 1215. But I think that depends on just how fast the traffic is coming and going with security and all that stuff. Now, in the port, you'll have to go through security. So um, x-ray inspection of your carry-on luggage. Uh, if you have check-in luggage, they will have mailed you some of these luggage tags. And if you already have those, then you can actually leave your luggage before you get in the security line and that will come to your room later. We'll talk more about that um, in a little bit, but that is nice because you don't have to like stand in line to really check your luggage. There are just people that you can kind of like drop your luggage off before you get in the actual security line. If for some reason you didn't get those tags printed uh, earlier, or you didn't put them on, um, there are people that can help you do that. Why would you want to check in your luggage? Well, because your stateroom isn't going to be ready right away if you have an early um, check-in time. So generally the staterooms are ready but around 1.30 or 2 p.m. And if you have a boarding time of 11.30, you don't want to be lugging your luggage around the ship and so you want to check it and then have them deliver it to your room later. If your port arrival time is after 2 p.m., then you might not want to check it in because you'll have it with you. You could just go straight to your room. That's entirely up to you. Uh, but then when you finally like complete the check-in process in the port, show your passports, last thing before you get on the ship is they'll tell you what time your room's gonna be ready and then they'll tell you that your room keys they're not gonna give to you right away. They're gonna be in a little envelope on top of your room number, and that's where just where you go find it in an envelope. I think that's an interesting way of handing out keys, but that's how they do it. And then, uh, in our case, the room's already at 1.30. That's when they like unlock the doors to all of the stateroom areas. And then uh, around 2.30, our luggage was delivered to our room. Now, you know, their guarantee is only by four o'clock. When they, because it could be for the whole different parts of the ship. Now, they don't actually deliver the luggage into the room. They deliver your luggage right in front of the door to your room. So make sure you don't have a bunch of valuables in anything you check um, because, you know, I mean, I guess cruises are fairly safe, but yes, somebody could come up and just wheel that thing off to another part of the ship. So, but if it's just full of, you know, clothes that only fit you, who's gonna want that anyway? Okay, so when you do get on the ship, if your room's not ready, what are you gonna do? Well, lunch. Uh, lunch is open first thing. Many of the restaurants are open first thing. The buffets generally open first thing. The pools are open first thing. The best time to use the pool on a Disney cruise 
is like right as you get on the ship because it's just less busy right as you get on the ship. If you want to do that, consider wearing your um, swimsuit under your clothing or pack your swimsuit in your day bag um, so that you can change either in the bathroom or in your room if it's available earlier because your luggage that you've checked in might not have been here. We did that um, and we were able to go on like the water slides and things like that without any weight at all because nobody else was in the pool first thing. Some other things you might want to do first thing if you were hoping to snag a reservation for something that you couldn't get online, try to do that first thing. So if it's dining, go find dining reservations and try to make that dining reservation. If it's nursery time in the small world nursery, try to go to the small world nursery and get that right away. Some other things that are open right at arrival time, the kids clubs are open for tours. So you can go in any of them and just look around uh, up until the safety drill time. So safety drill time comes on your embarkation day, 4 p.m. for our cruise, that's when uh, everything shuts down on the ship and you have to go line up basically on the deck um, by the lifeboats so that they give you this drill and tell you how to wear your life vest. Yes, everybody needs to be accounted for and everybody needs to bring their key to the world card, that's your room key card, that they're gonna scan when you get to that safety drill. Something I forgot to mention about luggage earlier, uh, on Disney cruises, you can bring up to two bottles of wine with you and you can bring up to a six pack of beer. You can bring all of the bottled water, soda, tea, and packaged snacks that you want. They just have to be packaged and unopened. Uh, ostensibly, when we went through security, they didn't look through our stuff or check that they weren't. You know, maybe if you have a whole case of water, they were gonna start looking, um, but we brought on some water, some tea, um, like potato chips and things like that, and it was uh, all good. Okay, so now that you've gone through the safety drill, you're officially on board and the ship is into full swing. Uh, there will be a sail, a wave party where Disney and a crew of dancers will like wave and sail you away. It is at uh, one of the pools that they cover up and turn into a stage. That's fun if you've got kiddos with you and they do that. And then after that is when the ship pulls out of port. At this time, you might be wondering, okay, well, Chris, when do I eat? Uh, you will be assigned one of two eating times. There's our early eating time, which is around six, and there's a late eating time, which is around 8 p.m. Um, when you did your 30-day uh, check-in, that's when it'll tell you what your eating time is. Actually, I think it'll tell you that uh, 75 days out when you've done your um, activity selections. If you want a earlier or later time, you can wait list for the time that you didn't have. In our case, we were assigned the late eating time, which really doesn't work with a three-year-old, and so we wait listed for the early eating time, uh, and that was given to us. Now, there are a few different restaurants on board the ship, and generally for dinner, you'll rotate through them. So uh, if there's three restaurants, you'll rotate through the three restaurants. On our case, because we had a two-day cruise, there were dinner in two of the restaurants and then uh, breakfast in the third restaurant on the third day, just so that they made sure everybody made it through the restaurant. Sometimes the buffet also operates as an additional restaurant. Uh, in our case, uh, the buffet was open for breakfast and lunch, but the buffet on this cruise was never open for dinner. Now, it turns out these restaurants, uh, they each have a different menu and they each have a different theme. Um, definitely our favorite on the Disney Magic was Animator's Palette. It had like a cool little animation show that goes through there. I won't entirely give it away for you because you want to see that show. Um, probably our least favorite was Lumiere's because it was just like this French themed uh, contemporary restaurant that didn't have much like kid theming. And with a three year old, our daughter likes more kid theming, though we really did like this souffle for dessert at Lumiere's. That was probably our favorite thing that we ate on the cruise. Uh, if I were to go back again, I would order like two souffles each person for dessert. Our daughter really liked the Mickey Mouse ice cream bar. An interesting um, process for ordering, if you have kids in your party, they will come and take the kids' orders first, and then they will bring the kids' food first, and then they will bring, then they will take the adults' orders, and then they'll bring the adult food. Uh, if you are an adult and you wanna order something off the kids' menu, more power to you, you can eat that as well. Now there's another high-end eating option uh, on this ship, it's called Palo. On some other ships, there might be a couple of them, but um, basically it's an upcharge. It's a fancier adult-only restaurant, uh, and so if you want that, you need to reserve that when you did your selection 75 
five days out or when you get on the ship to check to see if there are any like same day cancellations or bookings that you can snack. Other things to eat on board, um, there are a bunch of options like around the pools. You can get like burgers, you can get pizza, you can get ice cream, you can get fruit. <clears throat> they have really weird hours in my opinion. And so make sure you do pay attention to those hours because I found there were certain times when I wanted to get food or snacks and not all these things were open all the time. The food options that are open all the time, 24 hour drink station that you can get soda, teas and coffee. You can also order room service most hours of the day. Pro tip for you, if you wanna save time on breakfast, order your breakfast as room service. In the desk in the room, they'll have the room service menus. You can fill that out and hang it on your door the night before and you can select a 30 minute window that they'll deliver it to you in the morning. That's a great way to not have to schlep anywhere for breakfast, not have to wait in line. Uh, though all of the things that come to the room are cold other than coffee. So it's like breads, pastries, donuts, cereal, um, cold drinks, and then hot drinks, but no eggs, omelets, waffles, things like that delivered room service for breakfast. Now there is a bunch of food and drink that costs more on the ship. Like what? So there's this uh, Cove Cafe, which serves coffee. The regular coffee is free, but if you want the fancy coffee, like the espresso-based coffee, then that's gonna cost you money. Soda's free, but if you want smoothies, that's gonna cost you money. All alcoholic drinks are gonna cost you money. If you're at the movie theater and you wanna buy popcorn, that's gonna cost you money. Uh, if you're at the sit-down restaurants and you want some of the premium drinks at the sit-down restaurants, those are gonna cost you money too. And so definitely beware of the extra of charges. Shopping on board the ship, there's tons of places that you can buy stuff. The shops are generally only open when the ship is out of port. So if you're at a sea day, the shops may very well be open the whole sea day. But if you're going into various ports, then you can expect the shops to only be open in the evening once the ship has pulled out of any ports. If you've got kids, they're sure to enjoy the character meetups on board the ship. Uh, they're not ticketed or reserved or paid for. They are included in the all-inclusive pricing you will find the times listed in the Disney Cruise Line Navigator app. And so this is where I'm gonna plug this app again. They don't post schedules anymore. Instead, the entire schedule for the ship is in this app. It's available for Apple and Android. You're definitely gonna wanna download it. How do you use it if you don't have internet on board the ship? Well, uh, they've got you covered. When you connect to the ship's Wi-Fi, just the, Dis the Cruise Line Navigator app works. Within that app, you can also message your friends or family on board the ship. There's kind of like a messaging capability in there. And then if the ship has anything to communicate to you, they will use that app to communicate to you. So you will definitely want to make sure you have that app downloaded and you're logged in before you get on your cruise. That's also how you're going to know um, like what uh, major show times you should go to and things like that. We've been like the restaurant menus are on the app. We've been consulting that app probably hourly to help us determine where we should go at any given time. Now, speaking of other reservations, also, if you've got kids, um, in addition to doing the character meet and greets, you just show up and take a photo. By the way, they'll take a photo with the Disney photographer that you can buy a photo pass to get those photos. They will also take a picture with your camera if you give it to them. They'll have the pro photographer and then they'll have the other Disney cast member to take a picture with your phone. Um, we didn't buy any of the photos that they took, but the photos uh, that they took with our phone were pretty great memories and our three-year-old daughter really enjoyed meeting Mickey and Donald and Goofy and Minnie and the characters that she was able to meet. The lines for character meet and greets, definitely less busy the earlier in the cruise. Uh, like if you can get some right in that time before the safety drill, those are gonna be clutch because the lines are gonna be almost zero. Uh, later on, we waited like 30 or 40 minutes to meet Donald. So uh, there's a lot of people that wanna take pictures with the characters. It's, um, it's, it's serious business on these Disney crews. The things another kids might enjoy is the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Um, where they'll either dress kids up as a prince or a princess, or if they're doing a pirate night, then they'll have dress up for pirate night. Uh, so in our case, that's what we had on board. The base pricing is I think about $40 just for makeup, somewhere around $80 if you wanna get a costume, like $100 if you wanna get the premium costume, uh, but your kids do get to take the costume home with them 
after the cruise on the selections if you buy the costumes. Another thing I'm sure you're wondering is about towels. This is always a thing like, do you have to bring the towels from your room to go to the pool? Um, no, there are tons of towels available by the pool. And actually, if you're up at the adult pool, which is actually where I'm sitting right now, in addition to towels, they also have blankets that you can use to cover yourself if you're here late at night. If you're going on a longer cruise and you need to do your laundry, good news, Disney Cruise Line has you covered. They've got self-service laundry that includes washers and and the dryers, you'll find them in a few different areas of the ship. Now, it turns out there's a ton more to do on the ship other than just eating and swimming in the pool. A couple of things you definitely don't want to miss are the Broadway style stage shows. On our cruise, there was two Tangled, the story of Rapunzel and Disney Dream, which had a lot of classic Disney songs and characters both great included in your price so make sure you get over to see the shows while you're on the cruise there's also a big movie theater if you want to see some disney movies that's a great way to relax there are tons of clubs and bars around the ship from jazz bars with live piano players to irish pubs and even more in between there's clubs and lounges that are family friendly there's others that are 18 and up you can check the cruise line navigator app to see what's going on in all the different spaces. When you're coming back on the cruise ship from your day in a port adventure, if your port is anything like this port in Ensenada, they'll have some port control where you'll need to show your passport and your room key card. You needed to show your room key card to get off the ship. You need to show that back on. At this particular port, they've got like two ID checks, one at the port and then a second one at the ship. So make sure you have those two things with you all the time when you're off the ship. So the next step getting back onto the ship is uh, you got to go through some sort of security check where they x-ray and scan your luggage, go through metal detectors. Uh, and then here in Ensenada, they were actually handing out ice cold towels. Oh, this thing's so cold. So nice. Uh, and they've got cold drinks before getting on the ship where you show your room key card once again. When it's time to do your port excursion and you're getting off the ship, uh, it might be in different places because they might have a, you might get off on level two, you might get off on level one, so you got to figure out where you're getting off. But here, where we got off in Ensenada, it was on level one, both at the front and the back of the ship. And to get off the ship, all we had to show was our room key card. But to get back on the ship, you'll need your passport. So make sure you bring both of those. And if you try to use someone else's key card, because OC Girl tried to use our daughter's key card, and they were like, nope, that's not yours. You don't look like a three-year-old because you uploaded a picture when you put this on and they see it as you get on the ship with your key card. Oh, and if you're going out to a port stop or an excursion where you're going to the beach, no problem. They'll have plenty of towels right by the exit as you go out. Now, the final day of your cruise is gonna be debarkation day, the day that you depart the ship. And you know, it's kind of a zoo to get on a cruise ship and it's kind of a zoo to get off. Uh, things you'll wanna know about debarkation day first is about food on debarkation day. Room service for breakfast is not available on your final day. Instead, it is at the restaurants that you would typically eat for dinner and also at the buffet. Pretty much everything else on the ship is closed. Quick serve restaurants, the shops, the pools, they want you to eat and then they want you to leave. On our cruise, they asked guests to leave their room by 8 a.m., which in our case meant, depending upon our breakfast time, we might have needed to take our stuff to breakfast. Same for you, depending upon how you wanna do it, but I'll talk through some of those options. So you'll be assigned a time to eat breakfast at one of the full service restaurants. On our cruise, the times were 7.15 a.m. and 8.15 a.m. The buffet was open also as another option from 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., so that's what we did. It wasn't very busy at the buffet because it turned out everybody was in line for the restaurants. Now, the buffet itself was better the previous day on their cruise. They have less stuff and less food on debarkation day. Now, if you want to check your luggage on your way off the cruise so that you don't have to carry it around with you, the housekeeping staff, they will put luggage tags in your room the night before that has a Disney character on it. And you put that around your suitcase with your name on it. You put it outside of the hallway of your room by midnight. They will pick it up and then it'll be waiting for you in the port in the morning. The catch is that if you check your luggage, you're gonna have to wait on the ship until your luggage tag character is called over the overhead speakers before you head off the ship to go into the port. Otherwise, your luggage might not be there yet. On our debarkation day in San Diego, the ship pulled into port at around 7.30 in the morning. So people who were just 
carrying all their stuff, they could leave at that point. But if you had luggage checked, they weren't calling the first groups until about 8 a.m. The actual port process of getting off the ship is much easier than getting on the ship. As you walk out of the atrium lobby, you show your key to the world card one last time to get off the ship. And then in our case, because we were coming into the USA, we saw friendly customs and border protection to show our passport and they took our picture and then voila, back to reality. And the last thing to know is I've got more videos on this Disney cruise and lots of other great destinations. You can check some links up here in the screen or in the description below. If you want to see all about our time in Ensenada, you can check that out right here. Or if you want to see the full walking tour of the Disney Magic, you can check that out right here. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you over there.